Andrew and Fear Lee. However, it does not touch the lateral fissure of Sylvius, which is an important point to notice. Therefore, the entire portion of the brain anterior is the frontal lobe. The entire portion of the brain, most of it is the parietal lobe. And the portion of the brain below the lateral fissure of Sylvius is the temporal lobe. OK. Let's focus on the frontal lobe. We have put another sulcus in place. That is the pre-central sulcus, which is right in front of the central sulcus. That's why it's called the pre-central sulcus. And now we can see that it has demarcated a gyrus between the two of them. That gyrus is known as the pre-central gyrus. And that is the primary motor cortex. So what does the primary motor cortex do? The primary motor cortex is responsible for execution of fine motor action of the opposite side of the body. Suppose this area gets destroyed and the person has what will be the manifestation? The person will have opposite side, face and arm, heavy paralysis. Can I ask Mike Swickhard here to give us a quick demonstration of how a person will present it, present with? Can you please come over here? And show us left side. He will present with a manifestation on the right side, face and arm predominantly. <laughs> so you can see that his right side of his face is drooping and his arm is paralyzed. So this is the manifestation that you will see if there's a lesion of the left primary motor cortex. Thank you very much, Mike. <laughs> so that is one important functional area. This is broadband area four, as you can see there. Just to prevent the whole picture from getting too cluttered, I have not written the full names, I'll just put the Broadman areas. Let's take another area. You can see that this is another shaded area which is just anterior to the primary motor cortex. It is wider above and narrower below. This is the pre-motor cortex or the secondary motor cortex. The pre-motor cortex is meant for planning, designing, and programming of the motor actions. The premotor cortex sends its command to the primary motor cortex. Let's take another sulci and diorite. Here we can see that there's a sulcus here and another sulcus here. The upper one is called the superior frontal sulcus and the lower one is called the inferior frontal sulcus and thereby we have demarcated the rest of the frontal lobe into a sub a superior frontal gyrus, a middle frontal gyrus, and an inferior frontal gyrus. With this in place, let's put the next functional area. What do we see here? We see this is called the frontal eye field. The location of the frontal eye field is in the middle frontal gyrus. What is the function of this frontal eye field? The frontal eye field is concerned with conjugate deviation of both the eyes to the opposite side. Therefore, if there is a destructive lesion of this frontal eye field, as for example happens in a stroke, the patient's both eyes will be fixedly deviated to the same side. May I ask Catherine here to demonstrate to us a patient with a destructive lesion of the left frontal eye field? destructive lesion of the left frontal eye field. So you can see, you're not supposed to be smiling. <laughs> She's got a fixed deviation of both eyes to the same side as the lesion. That is the point to be noted. Thank you very much, Kenzie. So this is a lesion of the left frontal eye field at the location. Now let's come put a few more sulci in place. Can you see one sulcus here? In the inferior frontal gyrus, there are two small sulci. They are actually part of the lateral fissure of Sylvius. This one is called the horizontal, and this one is called the ascending. Anterior horizontal, anterior ascending. They are all parts of the lateral fissure. When we have these two sulci, it splits the entire inferior frontal gyrus into three parts. This part is known as the opercular part. 
This portion is known as the triangular part because it is shaped like a triangle and this portion is known as the orbital part. So the inferior frontal gyrus gets divided into three parts. Now let's put a very important functional area there. We can see that the opercular part and the triangular part, both of them together, have a functional area which is known as the Broca's area, the motor area, the expressive area, motor speech area. And if we have a lesion of this Broca's area is present only on the dominant hemisphere. It's present only on the left side. And it is present on the inferior frontal gyrus, the posterior part of the inferior frontal gyrus. And if we have a lesion in this area, we get what is known as expressive or motor or Broca's aphasia. So these are the functional areas that we see, important functional areas that we see on the lateral surface. And the remaining part of the lateral surface is all dorsolateral PFC, prefrontal cortex. We shall not elaborate on the details of it, but do know that the PFC occupies one-fourth of the whole brain. It is the highest area of intellectual person. Now that we have seen these functional areas on the lateral surface, now let's turn over to the medial surface. And we will see that many of these functional areas also extend onto the medial surface in the frontal lobe. So here we have a view of the medial surface of the brain. Let's put a few sulci and gyri and look at the functional areas on the medial surface. You can see on the medial surface that there is an area which we have demarcated here. This area is referred to as the paracentral lobule. And this paracentral, right in the middle of the paracentral lobule, we can see a little bit of the central sulcus. So therefore, the portion anterior to the central sulcus happens to be the motor area. So let's focus on that portion anterior to it. So this is the same continuation of the primary motor cortex with the same color coding and the same number. So this is the primary motor cortex on the present lobe. But which part of the body does this cover? Control? This controls the leg and the foot area. So therefore, if there is a lesion of this area, the person will also have spastic paralysis of the opposite side, but it will predominantly involve the leg and the foot area. Let's put one more functional area in place. Just in front of the primary motor cortex, again we have the same, which is on the lateral surface, the premotor cortex, which is responsible for programming, designing, and planning of the action. There is yet one more area. This is known as a supplementary motor cortex, which has got the same function as the premotor cortex. Therefore, these two areas, number six here and number six here, these two together are considered as the motor planning cortical area. These are the ones which plan and then perform the send their commands to the primary motor cortex for execution of actions. Let's put another sulcus in place now. We can see one sulcus going all around the corpus callosum. This is called the callosal sulcus. Let's put yet one more sulcus. We can see another sulcus which runs approximately parallel to it, but there's a, a distinct limb which goes up and a distinct limb which goes down. Please take a good look at that. That is called the single age sulcus. And thereby, we have demarcated yet one more portion of the brain on the medial surface, and that portion is called the cingulate gyrus. The anterior half of the cingulate gyrus belongs to the prefrontal cortex. The posterior half of the cingulate gyrus belongs to the limbic system. And finally, this portion of the medial surface, even including the supplementary motor area, this whole thing is called the medial frontal gyrus. And Apart from the supplementary motor cortex, this portion is referred to as medial PFC. And what does this do? The medial PFC, both sides, controls the urinary sphincters. And if we have a bilateral lesion of the medial PFC, the patient develops urinary incontinence and loss of bladder uh, control. And finally, this portion, which is in contact with the orbital surface of the frontal bone, is called the orbitofrontal PFC, which is lesion of this area will produce impulsive behavior. So that finishes with a frontal lobe. Get shut off.